Hi. In this tutorial, we're going to create an application in order to store its secrets in Azure Key Vault. As you can see, I'm using Eclipse, and I've installed Spring Tool Suite as a plugin in order to make uh, my programming easy. So the very first thing we're going to do is click on the dashboard. So I use this because um, Spring will automatically generate a new project structure. So it makes it uh, easy for developers to start coding right away. Um, you can go to start.spring.io um, if you don't have this plugged in, and it'll do the same thing. So you provide the name of the project. I'm selecting Maven because that's uh, more common uh, for Java developers, especially um, when they're using Eclipse uh, ID. So I was given a package demo that key vault, and let's change the description to Azure Key Vault. Then let's change the package name to com.demo.keyvault. Click on next. Next, I'm going to select all the dependencies that I need for this project. If you notice, um, Spring provides the Azure Key Vault, uh, which is awesome. I'm also going to need these other dependencies uh, connecting to SQL Server. I use Timeleaf um, as a, a template for my web application. This is going to be a web application. So you click on Next, and voila! Spring has um, automatically generated a project. So let's step through. First thing is, let's look at the palm.xml that Spring generated. As you can see, these are the dependencies that um, Spring went and grabbed for me um, that I needed for this project. And it also went ahead and grabbed all the libraries, all those Java files, um, even Tomcat, all the dependencies that I need. So, Next thing it creates automatically is um, this Spring Boot application. This is a main class entry point for your applications. It'll go and auto config all the dependencies that you need for this project. Then, if you go to Applications uh, Properties, that's where you enter all your um, username, passwords, all your connection information, as you can see, it's blank right now. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a whole bunch of packages that we need. I'll start by creating, uh, if I can type entity, then let's create Another one, and we'll call this one controller. Then finally, I'm going to create another one called repository. Excellent. Well, all of this will make sense um, once we create the classes. Next thing is um, this is going to be the table in the database that um, I'm going to create. It has first name, last name, email, address of a person. So let's minimize that. So given that table, I need to create a class within Spring or also Java, in order to let Spring know that, okay, um, the structure of that table. 
So in order to do this, um, you need to provide an annotation. Um, I'll just call it uh, entity, then table. And this part is very, oh, can't even type today. Yeah, table, okay. Let's generate some uh, libraries I need. Um, so the next thing is um, I'll provide the name of the table and go ahead and create the ID, first name, last name, email, let's give it uh, address and country spring state and phone number so as you can see this is like a pojo file but you need to tell um spring what this uh, class is so like the id i'm telling spring that okay this is my primary key so the annotation is id then for inserts and deletes, I need to um, create this um, generated value. Basically, what we're telling Spring is whenever we do an insert, um, auto generate the primary key field. Next, I need to define um, tell Spring uh, when you go to the database. In this table, um, this is a representation guess ID. Um, is what you need to map to the ID. Uh, first name, let me quickly type these in. And make sure when you're defining the um, column names here, it should match exactly. Um, I believe it's case sensitive, so it should match exactly what you're defining in your table for spring to uh, know what it is and for you not to get any unnecessary errors. So phone number, then this is like any other POJO file in Java, you generate the getters and setters and voila, that wasn't so painful. So now we're done with uh, defining what the guess object is going to look like. Let's save that. Next thing is we're going to create an interface, a repository interface. And what a repository does is in Spring is it's the one that Spring will automatically, now that it knows what your database structure is, um, it'll go ahead and create automatically create your um, CRUD statement, like the commonly used statements like insert, delete, find by name, find by last name, um, update, all of that is going to auto-generate. So for this um, tutorial, I'm using paging and sorting repository, but you can easily use um, extend the repository object, or um, you can extend the CRUD repository. They all have different um, functionalities. And as you can see, that's it. So now we can create the controller. So since this is a web um, project that I'm creating, we need to create a controller in order for it to handle all the incoming um, web requests. So let's give it the at controller annotation that uh, Spring is going to know that this is your controller class. 
next, we're going to annotate, give it the request mapping um, annotation. And this one is just uh, telling Spring. Type. So we're going to give it a value um, slash guest. So if you go to your URL and type slash guest, um, when Spring is handling this class, it just knows that, okay, route the user to handle the request at this controller. So next we are using the auto wire um, annotation. So let me quickly bring in my dependency classes, which I'm going to use a guest repository. And let's bring in the actual table object and get back and define our guest repository. So um, one thing to point out about the auto wired repository is uh, we no longer need to go create constructors or um, initialize this um, um, object over here because once you do an auto config, Spring will automatically go and initialize and bring in this um, object for you. So that's where um, the dependency injection of Spring Power uh, comes into play. Um, the next thing is we need to define what method when somebody goes to slash guest. Um, it needs to be mapped to into. So think of methods like when you're dealing with REST, um, you're going to have method that um, get, get or post, delete. Uh, I believe the other one is uh, put. Those are different uh, actions that uh, when you're dealing with REST. So for this method, we're saying if somebody wants to go to guest and types on guest um, just go to the sign uh, get class um, and retrieve or do something so now we'll create the java method that actually handles um, um, the business logic when a get um, web request is uh, called. So public spring, let's call it get uh, reservation. Define the the properties that we're going to be passing in or better yet, not properties, the parameters that um, we're going to be passing in. So those are your query strings uh, when you're on a URL. If you hit a submit, um, the, the parameters that you're calling. So for this one, get reservation, uh, we're saying um, passing the state. Um, let's make it not required. Then Java need to explicitly also for this um, um, method um, method um, specify the parameter of type state. And model is just an object that when you're in a web situation and you need to pass um, parameters in between um, your HTML class versus uh, in your business class, um, that's a good object for you to put all those parameters wrapped it in and pass it back and forth. So the next thing is we need to 
create an array list that um, we're going to be retrieving the records from the database and assigning it to. So let me quickly import Java util. That list. Then we'll also do the same for array list for method to recognize what that is. So array list. Perfect. Next, um, let's call the actual um, repository class. Um, this is the one grabbing data from the database on our behalf. So let's give it um, guest. We're going to be retrieving and find all. So if you notice, when we we're creating the guest repository, we did not define anything in the class. So that's where I was telling you that Spring will go and automatically create these functions for you. So next, let's go through the guess and iterate through. So we're going to say for each guest record set um, add the guest record into this array list. Okay. Then finally, now that we're done, we need to populate the model class, um, set the attribute, give it a unique name. We're going to call it guest shocker. <laughs> and pass in what you want to be inside the guest. So we're going to pass the guest list. The, so it's a list of all the records in the database. We're just passing in this on guest list. Then we're going to return a string called guest. This one is very important. The guest is just um, a name of the uh, HTML file that um, you're going to be defining in your template. Um, it just needs to match um, the file. You can call it uh, reservation.html if that's what you want to call your HTML. And um, you just need to tell Spring uh, which template it should go fine. So before this, um, I created uh, a guess.html because I don't want you guys to suffer through me typing all of that. But basically, it's just a simple um, HTML file where I'm going to be populating the name, um, email, phone number. If you notice, the name guest object is, has to match there because you're going through iterating through and populating the, through the object, last name, email, phone number. So next we're going to, um, this is a bad way of doing things. Um, normally developers will specify what their username um, or what the URL of the address is, username, password, and all these uh, other um, settings like drivers for SQL Server. This is really bad. So I created a database in the Azure, a SQL Server database. So uh, let's open the database, go to Spring, connection string, click on JDBC. Copy that, and let's get back to this. And I'm lazy, so I'm not going to remember all of that. So this is how you extract the part that is your JDBC and your username and password. So this is bad, bad, bad. So we'll show in other um, tutorials a good way of doing this.